Hey guys, it's Paul. Thought I would um, run through and kind of illustrate, show you guys how you make a Wixom forecast, the WXIM Wixom forecast, which you can certainly uh, look at online at WXSIM.com. It's a great program, uh, which allows you basically to make an in your backyard forecast uh, utilizing both the GFS and the NAM and some other um, upwind um, advection observations and all of that gets pulled in to basically help make a temperature forecast first and then a precipitation forecast later. Pretty helpful program if you are interested in trying to model uh, a forecast for your own backyard. So I'll run you through it real quick here. So here's the, the Wixom uh, model. Uh, basically the first thing you need to do is open up the Wixomate which is the internet tool that'll gather the information that you need. So you always give it a nice unique uh, file name. Um, I import the data here which is actually my home weather station uh, which I'll have to do again uh, later. But here you just download the files and you can see the different uh, parameters and models that it looks at. So certain things like uh, some uh, automated weather up, upstream, some buoy data, model data from GFS, advection, uh, some ROB data, uh, the NAM, MOS data, uh, GFS NAM, all that kind of gets brought together um, into and kind of culled into a file that will then be used and brought over for the for the Wixom uh, forecast. So basically download that and you'll see here the progress it makes. It moves pretty quickly. I remember when I first got this many years ago and I had a much slower internet connection. It certainly didn't uh, move uh, at a great speed but you see it's starting to cull the data so it's cutting off pieces it doesn't need, brings it all together I now have a saved um, file that I'm going to use to go ahead and import. And when you import, it'll bring that current uh, modeling in. And when I look for it here, uh, I always do this twice actually, but when you look for the data, I'll find today's date, which is April 9th, 2020. Um, I can come up with it here, uh, right there. So I pull in the, the modeling data about that too much. Uh, so you can see at this time of day, and it's, uh, it's almost four o'clock in the afternoon, I'm using the latest and greatest that, that is currently out there. That's 12Z um, um, GFS and the NAM is what I'm using as the basis of the forecast. Um, it does play some, and you could adjust some of this for the wind factors upstream, but I don't get too much involved in that. I can You can do a bunch of things as you go through a forecast. Um, in general, depending on if there was a recent frontal passage and precipitations falling, I might play a little bit with it. But for now, I'm going to kind of let um, the GFS and NAM blend kind of do their thing. So I'm not going to play too much with any of the weighting factors on this, and I'm just going to let it go um, at that. Next important piece, if you have a local weather station, it can certainly help by pulling in um, your local um, the, the local station. So I'm basically just going to import uh, the local data here, like so. And it finds the most recent max and min temp that I recorded here in the last 24 hours. Also precipitation that fell. We had some rain and there was a front, frontal passage a couple of hours ago. So we, we definitely had some, uh, some precipitation over the last 24 hours. I accept that. Uh, here's where I like to always look, um, as you can have some you know, based on the time that it's looking at in the last hour, uh, what the wind direction here, as you can see, was southeast. I'm going to take a look at the latest observations from Philadelphia, um, which is west-northwest, and no doubt when I look out towards Chester County, where I am, at MQS, uh, also west-northwest. So I'm going to make sure that I make my wind direction west-northwest. And I look, you know, looking at the sky cover, it the, the weather station thinks it's mostly cloudy. I would, I would call that um, what I'm seeing out there. A little less than mostly cloudy so uh, I'm going to adjust some of the levels uh, here we can kind of adjust the levels of the cloud uh, and I'm going to do a partly actually I'm going to probably make it a little um, a little bit better a little more fair than that we'll call it um, eh, fair to partly cloudy right now northwest wind is the dominant direction I'm going to take any recent precip and temps into account uh, all of that basically uh, gives us the go ahead then to say okay it looks fairly fairly accurate so far. I'm going to do a, a full start. 
it starts the forecast. Um, it's, it's going to give you a, um, a, skew, a skew chart that you can look at here, and there are many ways to look at this. Um, and again, this would be the, the basic verification looking at what I had at 3 o'clock, um, extrapolating the data, and I can see the different at different height levels, um, what the and, and above where I am here, about 700 feet above sea level. Uh, it does some extrapolation based on the sea pressure at at at, at, at sea level, and you can see here the temperature as obviously as you go up, temperature goes down, and dew point follows. And again, a northwest wind is what's seen above the surface, and here at the surface, I also aligned it uh, to that, so we should be in pretty pretty good shape across the board here as I look at um, look at those parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and again I can play some games here with if um, I thought there was a lot of cold air advection upstream and in this case there is some since we just had a frontal passage I'll take one peak and I'll use a regional advection um, and I'm going to pull that in off the computer so it's going out and it's going to find some some upwind sites and, and you can see here the upwind sites that, that they're finding and they're all listed here and there's quite a few. Um, looks like they're as far away as uh, Thunder Bay um, up here that, that it's pulling in but it, it kind of extrapolates and pulls in uh, upwind wind, wind sites and temperatures and observations to kind of help with the, the temperature profiles and forecast. So I'll pull all that in and I will say let's uh, we'll use all of it for now. And I do like a straight line normally. I could play games with that, but I'm not. In this case, I'll use the, uh, the GFS data and, and the NAM data as it comes in. So I'm, I think I'm good to go there. And the forecast is off and running. Um, it will ask when the model thinks there's been a change in wind direction here. It, it saw a wind change here at about 9 o'clock tonight. It, do I want to import some more advection? If I thought it was worth it, um, I would maybe think about it in this case, and this is where you kind of can can play with it based on, on your knowledge or what you think is happening upstream if it's important. Um, I could bring it in. I'm not going to hear, and, and the Wixom actually gives you some advice not to, you know, basically ignore it at this point when you're this many hours out, uh, six hours out, and it's forecasting upwind. So probably not a bad move to just uh, let it go and let it fly. So I'm basically going to ignore these changes as they come. And you're going to see it's going through the days now. Basically, on every hour, it's going to forecast the current temperature and, and humidity and sky cover. Um, we're going to keep keep ignoring the uh, decay. So it's, it's saying basically the vection is decaying at this point because it's so far far out. So I'm going to hit um, C, which basically allows me to continue uh, the, the decay and not not try and do any more upwind advection. And I'm not going to do that anymore. So we're going to let that keep going and. I'll do this a few more times before it gets to the end of the forecast period. And you can see here it's going through the days and keep, here it goes, keeps on going. Uh, certainly some, definitely a rainy week ahead, which isn't a surprise. And there is going to be some much cooler air next week. See temperatures look like they're going to be in the 40s by the time we get through Tuesday, Wednesday next week and even colder by Wednesday. Um, Temperatures look like they're not getting out of the 40s for quite a few days next week, if it's right um, at this point. And again, this this model um, forecast tool is really only as good as um, the GFS and the NAM uh, that you put into it. So it, it really is just kind of spitting out what it what it took in. But ultimately, it comes through with a uh, forecast by day, highs and lows, uh, you know, min-max, and it gives me... Um, wind directions and how much precipitation it, it forecast each day. Obviously, not sure that'll happen, but looks like a lot of rain on uh, the 13th, which is next uh, Monday. So we'll see if, if that comes to pass. But very cool temperatures overall, uh, for sure, for this time of year. And uh, we'll see if that actually happens. But th that's generally the way this works. You can save the forecast then. And you do as a file, and you can always open it up at some later point. So, hey, hope uh, hope you guys enjoyed seeing how this works. Any questions, comments, feel free to give me a shout. Let me know. Drop me a message. Follow me on Twitter um, and on my website at www.chesco.com.
wx.com, chescoweather.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day, and hope this helps. Thanks.